Hello, welcome back to Triple P. I believe we have our internet issues solved. We have no drop frames and we are maxing out our upload speed. Thank you, Spectrum, for always providing wonderful internet service here to those of us in Central Texas. May you uh, get the faith that you deserve for everything that you've done. <laughs> Lee, what yes, are we sir. painting this evening? All right, we're gonna finish this uh, Black Legion Chaos Marine, and then we're gonna do the Terminator Champion Deshra that I was asked to do last night. Let's get that going, and here we go. What color are we starting with tonight? Uh, we're going to. Uh, before we had technical difficulties, I put um, Caliban green on the weapon casing. If you could tell. Now we're going to highlight it in loot green. There we go. I'm using a KL75 Blinsky per by zero. All my paint so far has been watered down 50-50. Uh, one part water and one part. Here we go. We're doing this Chaos Marine uh, standard uh, Black Legion style. Yes, sir. Well, well not, not really because, because well, everything, everything but the the, the, the embellishments or the the metal filigree around his armor. The filigree I I opted out of using Retribute Gold. Uh, put hammered copper. Alejo on it. I like the way it looks better.
and casing. Now we're going to go and highlight all the silver bits, metal bits with Rune Fang Steel. So how would you compare this metallic to your standard uh, kind of lead belcher? Uh, it's white. <laughs> I guess it's like a, a super shiny. It's probably the purest silver I have. Very transparent. Very transparent. Gives the metal a nice look. Put it on there. And do we thin this paint down? Yeah, yeah it's a 50-50 it's blend as well. That water. And you said this is to shine up the existing metal? Yes, sir. He had put a dark wash on it. Trying to bring back the shininess of the metal. Are you using a different brush than normal? Uh, yeah, I, I am because I have I wanted to, to get the best quality. I was noticing that even though synthetic brushes is standard brushes, I work better personally with brushes that I have for myself at home. So I'm just using my Kalinsky brushes. This one's a scale 75 and most of the other ones I'll be using today are Windsor and Newton. Been trying to not buy like expensive brushes even though I, I take care of my brushes I just feel bad having to replace a $25 brush versus a $4 brush
we get Rhinox Hive. And Morn Fang. <coughs> Excuse me. Do those in for the belt. Then holster. Easy. Price five. Blend this fifties water, one thing. Belt left right here with the holster. What's your uh, plan on tomorrow there, Nick? Where are you finishing up?
Well, if I uh, give him permission uh, by the wife, I'm hoping uh, to do uh, some more Iron Man in the morning. Otherwise, uh, I'll have to uh, wait uh, till the next day, and hopefully I can uh, get him finished. Never know, considering how slow I paint. Um, and then it'll be back at it to finish the giant box of gene stealers. Nice. Yeah, I'm telling you, man, those things are coming out pretty nice. Yes, I'm uh, very happy with my basically complete uh, Death Guard army. They they look great on the tabletop, but uh, actually I, I really love painting the Tyranids, even the little guys. That's really, uh, to me, I really like the scheme I've come with it, and I, I just can't wait for the army to be at the point where I can get the full 2,000 points uh, to rock and roll on the tabletop. So what does a 2,000 point army consist of right now? Um, actually, let me check some stats and see what the those new lists are looking like. Belt and holster and thigh holster, thigh wrap. Horn. Alrighty, going over to 40kstats.com, we have from January a fourth place at the uh, Obsec Perth down in our friend's uh, upside down land. Mr. Ben Lepper here uh, has a Tyranid Battalion from Hyde Fleet Jormungandr. He is rocking uh, His Highness the Swarm Lord. Uh, that's the gentleman with too many swords in his arms. Mm -hmm. He's got the Malanthrope uh, as his warlord um, with the relic uh, Yerm Girl Factor. I don't even know what that is. Um, and the Warlord trait of Insidious Threats. He's rocking 30 Termagants with Devourers, which is the other work in progress uh, that I showed off a little bit earlier that are all in parts. He's got two threes of Tyranid warrior, Warriors with Scything Talons and Adrenal Glands. Uh, ten uh, Hormagants and three of the Widow Ripper Swarms, which are some of my favorite. I like, I like those models. Uh, down in the Elite slots, he's got a Maliceptor. Uh, with lurking maws and one, two, three lictors. He's got in the fast tech three raveners, which I'm not familiar with. I'll have to look up. And then uh, I believe the heavy support is the Forge World uh, Big Baddie, the barbed hero duel. So massive 275 point baddie, and he's got three of those. Nice. Got some uh, heavy, heavy duty stuff. Yeah, so I don't have any of those hero duels, nor do I plan on getting those. So that's something that I would swap with uh, Tran effects. I'd probably add in the spore launcher guys and probably uh, switch out the Hormagants for uh, Gene Stealers. Oh, nice.
to go back and touch up the Balthazar gold and then the black and we're done. That was fast. What was fast? Your painting, sir. So yes, the barbed hero duel is one of the Forge World models, and actually the other one, which is very popular as well, is the Bimacteron, which is part of the list from Mr. John Lennon, the winner of Salt Lake City GT from a week or two ago. He's running a patrol um, of High Fleet Kronos with a Neurothrope, three Ripper Swarms, ten Hormigants, uh, six hive guards, which is pretty standard. I have those are uh, the medium-sized troop guys. Then he also has a kraken battalion with uh, Mr. Swarm Lord, a winged hive tyrant, which is uh, my big winged guy. I can't wait to use him. And he also has sixty hormigons and uh, sorry, thirty hormigons and thirty termagants, or a giant mass of sixty guys. One lictor and two of the dimacterons. Sounds like a lot of models. Uh, yes, between the two detachments, we're looking at 70, 80 troops. And then the Swarm Lord, Hive Tyrant. Oh, there's an Exocrine in there as well. And then the Lictor and the Domacteron. So a giant mass of small dudes and a small group of very big dudes. So I've never played Tyranids. What is the playstyle on I would assume uh, for this uh, Mr. Lin's list, uh, he is uh, clogging up the board, uh, preventing uh, points uh, taking for the primary objective uh, scoring by having so many dudes in the way uh, with the massive amounts of troops, um, getting buffs off the Swarm Lord and uh, going in with the Dimacterons and taking out any um, dangerous units. And then uh, the Hive Guard, with their ability to indirect fire, uh, can take uh, points that are concealed or in buildings where they can benefit from the cover and staying away from being targeted themselves, but still being able to lay down fire. Uh, and then uh, the Exocrine, which I believe also has a long range capabilities to plink off stuff from the board. Yeah, those beetle bore guns, right? Sounds Actually, hold on just a second. This bad guy. So that's the Exocrine. Big boy. Glory, glory sunk in. Great. How long did that bad boy take you?
Uh, a guy like that, soup to nuts. Uh, he was a pretty difficult build uh, for assembly overall, and with the slowness that I paint, I would estimate I probably put maybe 15 hours in him. What's your longest uh, paint ever? A one model. Um, probably the giant uh, Ultramarines flyer. Uh, probably took the longest considering the uh, assembly, magnetization, um, coming up with a slightly uh, non-standard paint scheme, and then also putting on um, the decals, which uh, can take a considerable time considering how horrible the decals can be to put on right. and about uh, a 30 to 40% failure rate on them. Yep. And then similar, I would say the Repulsor Executioner uh, tank for the Ultramarines, similar to the uh, Flyer with its assembly, magnetization, uh, coming up with a different paint scheme and its uh, decals uh, was probably similar too. And that's probably one of my favorite pieces. Yeah, you do really good on your vehicles. Yeah, I have... You know, a little difficulty with the small guys and, and their little details, but I really, really do like getting a, a big old vehicle or a big old monster dude and really going at it and, and giving them a unique look. Lighting off his blue tack. He's trying to escape. Go oh, great chaos somewhere. All right, now I've just got the black to do. All black, and it's on to the next thing. Hey, people in the chat there, Mr. Nick. Just two. Haven't seen a return from our previous few years. Hopefully, people right, pick up as good. we keep going. Right. 
the stream is up and running five by five. It's looking really good so far. Now that everything's come back on, we're at max bandwidth and sound and visuals look good. So come join us, people. See over on the news feed at our friend Spiky Bits, they've got details on the new Eldar Codex and model pre orders uh, coming next week. Of course, we got the uh, Codex in digital and uh, physical form along with their um, stratagem cards. And for the models, we have, I believe, is uh, named headquarters of the Mogon Ra, which is a uh, Skeletor looking dude. Oh, and yeah, yeah. Skulls all over, and he's got a giant scythe cannon. He, I think he's uh, part of the Bone Wraith guys for Age of Sigmar. Or is this the Eldar guy? Uh, there's also a squad of Dark Reapers. Uh, and there's also, uh, looks like the Ferryman is like a mini, kind of like the Cherubim that some guys have, and the other little mini minis that come with the group. They have a, a little guy with them. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's also two Warlock models, um, uh, two different poses, um, and one with a cool helmet and one with a goofy Eldar face. There is a full 10 squad of guardians that also comes with uh, what looks like a portable cannon. Reminds me of the um, uh, manned cannons that the snow troopers and uh, Empire Strikes Back use, but in a kind of an Eldar uh, looking uh, way. Um, we have the data card set, also a new uh, set of extremely ugly super light blue lightly uh tur turquoise tealy nasty looking dice i guess they fit for the eldar and there's also uh maybe they're i don't know if it's a primark level but probably a more powerful level of yavrain the emissary of yanid uh, she is a um lady with a giant uh uh train uh purple uh like robed train a massive head dress with spiky uh, all over it hair a giant sword and a blue lynx looking creature it's also on her base the the cat's kind of cool looking it's uh, not a bad model and then there is the vizark which is a gentlemen all bedecked in the red armor helmet um uh headpiece and a massive uh great sword and then the yakarn which looks uh almost like some of the demons uh from some of the demons it's in a a swirl of blue energy waves and like trailing uh, smoke energy thing coming off the base and okay. it, it's ele the model is elevated into the air it's uh pretty interesting looking there 
And I believe that is it for them. Nice. That's like some pretty models. Or even the Eldar, which I don't really care for. Uh, these looks like some great updates. The sculpting uh, on them, especially the headquarters units, uh, are great. And looks like a, a really good update to the line uh, here. Hey, Theron, how you doing, buddy? Theron is a guy I know since I was 14. Good friend from the area. <laughs> Got a job. Painting miniatures. He's working hard. <laughs> I'm too old for this. Hey, I got a sweet brush. Are we done with the marine now, or we got more for I got one little thing left. I use a size zero from Da Vinci, the Maestro series. Stray hair on here. Kinda that I don't know if you can see it, but he has a chaos symbol that's burnt into his shoulder pad. Uh. Wait.
You said you're putting a white on the icon on the shoulder? Yeah, because it's burnt in. matter if we get a little bit outside this marking right here. Your boy should be watching me there, Mr. Theron. We don't want to give the twins nightmares. Is really cool. I grab this contrast paint, Blood Angels Red. Actually, you know, red ink, straight up red ink. Dr. Martin's. That's the shoots. All of their red, tap on the top, water really down. Five to one ratio. Get right to that ink. <laughs> I'd be so delicious. Have myself a brown mustard. red we're not going to dilute it this time well, normally you like to thin the contrast that's correct not this time
The chaos symbol is glowing on his arm. This guy right here. All right, this guy's done. Oh, you know what? It's not done. I lie. Don't be lying to our viewers. Forgot about the stupid pistol on his hips.
Oh, I forgot the one last detail. The white butt. Done. Do that or not, but he's done. All right, so off to the next thing. Oh, this is uh, the guy we're painting now. I see that the big nasty has gotten on the paint table. Yes, he is. He's out there. Daddy. Daddy, uh. Bucks.
make sure my paint can right so what is the first paint that we're going to do here oh death guard green first base color down mixing it a 50 50 blend We're gonna put a little flow aid in it. I'll keep it workable longer. So first we're doing 50-50 with water and then we're doing how much flow aid as well? Uh, yeah, it's uh, gonna be, it's gonna be a, um, mix of 50 50 water and then this one drop of foliage and then I am going to mix in AL 75 75 light moss green make it slightly darker and why the flow aid instead of just thinning it'll, it'll keep it it'll keep it workable longer so i'll be able to work the paint and blend it easier it won't dry up fat uh, dry up like normal keeps it workable longer and the blend I'm doing that scale soon five is now really ratio is just if I like it then that, that point is where I'm good Did you tell the stream uh, about the process and method uh, for the priming of this miniature? No, I haven't. Um, I took Vallejo black and I mixed in an olive green from, I do believe it was from scale 75 into it and then i added ultra flat medium and well i guess ultra matte medium so that when i paint him he's not so shiny he's uh pretty dulled but it gives me a nice green base to work off of is it too shiny there on camera no, this guy looks fantastic. Most primers have some type of sheen to it, like a. Uh... I'm trying to think of the word, also. I can't think of it. Uh, satin finish is the one that. Yeah, Death Guard Green. Satin finish. So. Trying to alleviate the flare off the cameras lights you guys can see it a lot better as a death guard player this is one of my favorite models the death shroud terminator uh, they come in uh, groups of between three and six models uh, this is the champion of the model and uh, he has uh, his uh, scythe, which is uh, something that he can use in both cleave and scythe. 
And now by standard, uh, all of the Death Guard also have a Plague Spurt Gauntlet, uh, which is a very short-ranged pistol weapon that they're able to use. And uh, this guy is also uh, holding some bells to the Grandfather Nurgle. Uh, these are extremely powerful units. They have uh, a weapon skill of 2 plus, which is extremely critical. Uh, they only have a strength of 4, but their toughness is 5. They've been up to 3 wounds. As a Terminator, of course, they have a 2 up regular save and a 4 up invulnerable save. And they also have the Bodyguard Aura, which allows for Friendly Plague Marine character units that has a wound characteristic of 9 or less within 3 inches of the unit. Enemy nodules are not able to target that character. So they're excellent uh, for protecting uh, your mid-level headquarters units and allowing them to stay on the board. So they're a good screening unit? Yes, uh, they're uh, able to get around the new uh, Lookout Sir uh, rule, which is normally protecting of characters. Uh, this allows any character within three units to be able to be protected uh, no matter what, as long as they're on the board. Sounds like a pretty valuable unit. The three wounds and, of course, the uh, disgustingly resilient uh, ability that all of the Death Guard have uh, makes them extremely sticky on the board. I remember trying to wipe these guys out in my night, Grey Knights, after their new codex came out. It was... it didn't fare well for me. Also, the uh, chimes of Contagion that he holds uh, is a 15 point uh, addition, but it allows three inches to be added to the contagion range of the new death card contagion of Nurgle's abilities, which is a progressive aura ability that allows the uh, disease that is around the death card to spread, which is a negative to the toughness that are within it, uh, allowing the increased range. Uh, of that ability to spread, uh, making a, a critical difference uh, when comparing the strength of the attack to the toughness of the defender. I have a beast unit. Yes, the critical part of the um, combat phase, first there's the hit and then the middle, is the comparison between strength and toughness which determines whether or not the wound will go through. And getting even just a one point uh, change in that can up the percentage chance of wounds going through and the defender having to make save to be greatly increased. So a considerable bump in the ability to also deal out damage to a unit that is also very sticky. Sculpts are pretty awesome. Yes, the Death Guard's a uh, much newer line, and the uh, Terminator's one of the newer, and as an elite unit, usually paired up uh, around uh, Mortarian, uh, Chaos Lords, um, Typhus, and such. Uh, is uh, They're extremely effective, and being able to keep those units that provide the extra Lord uh, auras and such that benefit the entire army to be able to stay on the board because these units they are sticky and the bodyguard aura makes those they're protecting extra sticky it's a lot of sticky yeah As a Death Guard player, how excited he is. 
These are one of my favorite units to paint. They have a considerable amount of detail. They have the uh, extra, this, this gentleman has the chimes and such. And so there's a lot of opportunities for you to, of course, make them in the standard Death Guard uh, colors for the base color for them, and then really embellish the details with them uh, as you see fit to make them unique units. They were uh, my favorite to paint. And uh, I might uh, uh, I might steal this guy, or I might get another box to up the three that I have in my army, which is usually good enough, but I might want a few more of them uh, just to be excessively annoying if I want to. Well, I don't play Death Guard, so... I think he's yours. Was well, this a guy that... Was going to be part of the giveaway, or is this just an extra? Yeah, the, the giveaway is just regular uh, plague marines. Um, plague marines I have about twenty-five of them, so I'm pretty good on plague marines. So that's okay. You can give those away. You know what I'm trying to find? I can't get is poxwalkers. There are forty-two completed poxwalkers on the shelf. Yeah, but I gotta paint them for the thing. These are all painted and goopy. I know, but I need them <laughs> for me. I'm trying to buy some, I couldn't find any online. That's how it looked. How many pox walkers do you need? Uh, I'm going to go for 20. Okay. What about 52 of them? That'd be great. And that and chaos spawns. I need three. I see a lot of 10 new on sprue death guard uh, $25 ship or oh, sorry $30 shipped for these and another uh, new on sprue 10 of them these are 25 ship so for 20 that would be I don't need a giant army. I need. What do you need them for anyway? Dianorama. The Poxwalkers are one of the enemies. That's what you want to give away? Yeah.
There's also a listing of uh, Parted Out Dark Imperium Box, which is the launch box for 8th edition. Uh, this would be, let's see. Uh, Forty-eight dollars shipped for twenty of them. I have no idea. I've never bought Cox Walkers at a good deal. Uh, yeah, it's a little better than the two other auctions separate that seem to be the lowest. Uh, if you want the new in box uh, Death Guard Pox Walkers, uh, they are ten or twenty eight dollars. About five minutes left.
Do you want to do a painting stream tomorrow night? Sure. Okay. So I've been informed by the wife I will, she'll be occupied in the morning with breakfast, so mornings with Mr. Nick will be delayed until Tuesday. You want me to do it in the morning? Yes, sir. Well, besides our technical difficulties, we still got our Chaos Marine done. And progress so far on this guy. that look mr nick it's a great start for a great model there i can't wait to see the finished product right and then we have the Really beautiful Chaos Marine. Uh, if I was playing Black Legion, I would love to have that model in my army. See the glowing. All right. Well, thank you very much. You guys all have a good evening. Be safe. Mr. Nick, take us away. Thank you, everyone, for joining Paint, Play, and Parlay tonight. We're always happy to have you. If you have any comments, questions, any constructive criticism, we're a work in progress, new business. And so we're always happy to listen and improve the quality of everything that we do. Can't wait to see you tomorrow night where we will have more uh, painting from Mr. Lee. And we will finish this model and continue on. Thank you and good night.